Welcome to Learning to Code with Python. I'm Chris Bradfield and I'll be your instructor for this series. These videos are intended for students ages 11 to 14, or about grades 5 to 8. If you're younger than that, you can still give it a try, but you might want to get help from an adult. We're going to be doing a lot of typing. Before we get started, make sure you've already installed Python on your computer. If you haven't, stop the video now and click on the link below for instructions. You will probably need to get your parents' help for that part. If you have any questions about this lesson or any other lessons, click on asking for help under the video. That's the best way. If you leave a comment on YouTube, I might not see it, or you might not see my answer. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about turtles. And when I say turtle, I don't mean the cute little animal with the shell. I'm actually talking about a robot. In the early days of computing, some scientists created a robot that looked kind of like the one in this picture. And they called it turtle because of its shape. The purpose of this robot was to draw, and so it had a pen attached to it. The way it worked was you would put a large piece of paper on the ground, and as the turtle drove around, it would leave a trail. By giving it different commands, you could create all kinds of shapes and designs. And that's what we're going to do today, only instead of using a robot and paper, we're going to use the computer. So let's open up our Python shell like we learned to do in our first video. To make our turtle appear, we'll need to type two commands. The first one is import turtle. Now you're going to see the import command quite a bit as you learn Python. Import tells the computer what kind of commands you're going to need for your program. In this case, we want it to load or import the commands for working with turtle graphics. Now that we've imported the turtle commands, let's make a turtle. Here's the command for that. Now I'm naming my turtle Fred. You can use a different name later, but let's just stick with Fred for now. Also, do you notice that capital P? That's important. If you type a lowercase p, things will not work correctly. So now we have our turtle window. Let's arrange these two windows next to each other. We'll be typing over here in the shell and seeing what the turtle does over here. Now I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like a turtle. It's just an arrow. Well, I agree. I'd also like my turtle to look like a turtle. So let's do that first. We're going to tell Fred to change his shape. There we go, that's better. This is what most of our turtle commands are going to look like. The name of the turtle, Fred, a dot, and then what command we want it to do. So now we're ready to draw. Let's see what Fred can do. First let's tell him to move forward. Fred.forward 100. Now before I press enter, I'd like you to think about what that 100 stands for. Do you think it means inches? Centimeters? No, Fred exists inside the computer. He doesn't know what inches or centimeters are. Fred measures everything in pixels. If you were to look really, really closely at your computer screen, you'd see it's made up of lots and lots of tiny little dots. Those little dots are called pixels. Depending on your screen, they may be really, really hard to see. So let's see Fred move. So we told Fred to go forward 100 pixels, and he left a trail behind him. Now let's tell him to turn left. And the argument, remember, that's the stuff that's inside the parentheses. The argument for left is not in pixels. It's in degrees. A full circle is 360 degrees. So telling him to turn 90 means he's now pointing up on the screen. If we tell him to go forward again, then that's the direction he moves in. So let's try repeating those commands a few more times. There, we've made a square. So let's try a few more commands. And by the way, this might be a good time to pause and practice these commands before you go on with the video. All right, let's try a few more commands. Fred.reset is useful. Basically tells Fred to erase everything he's drawn, go back to the middle, and start over again at the beginning. So let's tell Fred to change his color. 
the color command lets you type the name of a color, and Fred will change to that color. If we try to move, now we're drawing in that color. And feel free to pick a different color other than red. Fred knows quite a lot of them. If you want to see the full list, and it's a big one, there's a link below the video to a website where you can see all the colors that Fred knows how to do. Feel free to pause and go take a look at it. Another command that we're going to try out is circle. The circle takes as an argument the number for how big we want the circle to be. In our case here, we want the circle to have a radius of 100. Radius means the distance from the center to the edge. So our circle will look like that. We can also put a minus into the circle arguments. What do you think that'll do? Well, let's see. It drew a circle the same size, but started going in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and reset, and let's try another color. Let's do blue this time. Now sometimes when you're drawing, you want to draw shapes that aren't connected to each other. So for example, if we went forward, and then I wanted to draw a circle that wasn't attached to this line, what would I do? Well, that's where the command up comes in handy. Up tells Fred to pick his pen up so that it's no longer touching the paper. So that means now if we were to move forward, oops, we would move without leaving a line. So we can move to where we want to go, and then when we're ready to draw again, we tell Fred to put the pen down. And then if we draw, there we go. We've got shapes that aren't connected to each other. Now might be a good time to talk about what happens if we make a mistake. Now, some of you have probably seen this already. But what happens if I make a mistake and I spell a command wrong? Well, I get a bunch of scary red text that says I made an error. You need to get used to the idea of looking at these error messages and trying to understand what they mean. Usually the most important part of the error is this last line down here at the bottom. Let's look what it says. Turtle object has no attribute forward. Well, if I were to pay attention to what I'd been typing, I'd realize, well, of course it gave an error message. I spelled forward wrong. So let's try it again and spell it right. There we go. Get in the habit of trying to figure out what those error messages are telling you. Look very carefully at what you typed. Most of the time, it's going to be a simple mistake because you spelled something wrong. All right, let's stop there and review everything we've learned so far. To create our turtle, we needed to type these two commands in the red box. If you quit the Python shell and start it again, you'll need to type these two commands to get your turtle into back. We learned how to tell the turtle to move forward, and remember the number in the parentheses, the argument, is in pixels. We learned how to turn left, and as you might imagine, you can also turn right. We learned to draw a circle. We learned to change the color, and don't forget the color name needs to have the quotes around it, or it won't work right. We learned how to pick up or put down the pen, so that we're either drawing or moving without drawing. And we learned about Reset, which wipes the window clean and lets Fred start over again with a whole new drawing. And I'm going to leave this one bonus command here at the bottom, and I'm not going to tell you what it does. Go ahead and try it out and see if you can find out for yourself. All right, go and make some drawings. See what you can make. Try drawing a stick figure, a snowman, a house, whatever you might want to try. And I'll see you in the next lesson.